What is eudaimonia? We all say we want to be happy, but the pursuit of happiness often seems like a wild goose chase. Maybe the problem is not so much with us, or the world we live in, but with the very concept of happiness. Nowadays, happiness is mostly defined as the pursuit of pleasure and as the supreme human desideratum, which in philosophical terms is called hedonism. Hedonism, in other words, is an absence of distress, feeling of comfort, enjoyment, and pleasure. We all do several hedonist activities during a day, such as having sex, throwing parties, friendly chit-chats, food porn, and so on. We all do all of these in order to increase the level of happiness in our lives. The fact is, this sort of survival behaviors are instinctual, and the happiness they produce as an outcome is impermanent. However, they are still encouraged in philosophy and psychology. When hedonist activities are done in moderation, they might potentially increase physical and mental well-being. In popular understanding, hedonia refers to a person who seeks pleasure only for himself, regardless of form and without thinking about the future. In this idea, the philosophical perspective is different, focusing only on the person's well-being. But today, we are going to focus on another perspective of happiness, different from hedonism, which is eudaimonism. Diamond is our spirit, our inner strength. Socrates, for example, said he lived his life under his diamond. Thus, the central idea is to live our lives seeking the realization of our infinite potential, which leads to supreme fulfillment. Eudaimonia, in other words, stands for authenticity, excellence, meaning, and growth. It starts from the premise that reaching human potential is the ultimate goal. The best known supporters in antiquity were Aristotle, Plato, and Socrates. Aristotle believed that absolute happiness can be found through a virtuous life, meaning respecting high standards of ethics and morality based on strong human values. Under the roof of eudaimonism, there are several modern theories. Moslow's Pyramid of Needs, Carl Rogers' Theory of Fully Functional Man, Ryan's Theory of Self-Determination. It is with Plato's student Aristotle and its Nicomachean ethic that the concept of eudaimonia is most closely associated. The virtues he lists in his Nicomachean ethics are courage, temperance, generosity or liberality, magnificence, magnanimity, patience, truthfulness, wittiness, friendliness, gentility and justice. Aristotle sees ethics as more of an art than a science. We have to learn what the right approach to a situation is as part of our moral development. For Aristotle, a thing is best understood by looking at its end, purpose or goal. For example, the purpose of a knife is to cut. And it is by saying this that one best understands what a knife is. The goal of medicine is good health. And it is by seeing the fact that one best understands what medicine is all about. 
fine, but what is eudaimonia? For Aristotle, it is by understanding the distinctive function of a thing that one can understand its essence. Whereas human beings need nourishment like plants and have sentience like animals, their distinctive function, says Aristotle, is their unique and godlike capacity to reason. Thus, our supreme good is to lead a life that enables us to use and develop our reason, and that is in accordance with reason. By living our life to the full according to our essential nature as rational beings, we are bound to flourish, that is, to develop and express our full human potential, regardless of the ebb and flow of our good or bad fortune. Socrates, it seems, equated eudaimonia with wisdom and virtue. He says that one who is not wise cannot be happy, that nothing truly bad can ever happen to a good man, and claims in the menu that everything the soul endures under the guidance of wisdom ends in happiness. To put this in modern terms, if we develop our thinking skills, if we guard against lies and self-deception, if we train and master our emotions, we will over the years make better and better choices, do more and more meaningful things, and derive ever-increasing satisfaction from all that we have become and all that we have done and are yet able to do. Now, in order to find a better understanding of the concept, let's grab a pen and paper and give ourselves a chance to do an experiment together. Once again, we draw our attention to the 11 virtues explained by Aristotle in Nicomachean Ethics and write them down on a paper. As we notice, all these virtues can appear in our behaviors day in day out but it doesn't mean we are in full control of them at all times for instance patience is a virtue where we can benefit in several aspects of our lives this is the virtue that controls our temper we must neither get too angry nor fail to get angry when it should now without judging ourselves let us give ourselves five minutes to evaluate our ability to take control every single of these virtues after that in the second practice let us focus on the virtues which do not seem to have been mastered yet and require further care and attention let us think and find the reasons why such virtues have not yet been settled properly within us. After that, in the third practice, let us creatively design two strategies which would awaken these virtues within us. Let's remember to use as many positive sentences as we can. For example, in case we would like to practice patience, when we get hungry, we give ourselves 15 minutes of patience prior to eating. Or whenever we feel the energy of anger is being created within us, we consciously take 10 deep breaths before making any comments or decision. Of course, all I mentioned above are just few samples and you're free to create your own type of practices in this regard. Wishing to own and live a happy life requires faith in such practices. So keep the faith while going through this immaculate path of eudaimonia.